Uh, my name is John with Black Box Labs. We're a group uh, working out of San Diego State University. And today we're going to show you how to do uh, replication uh, for microfluidic devices. Uh, we can replicate uh, anything down to the tens of nanos. And what we're going to do today is make a replica of this. This has a feature size of one micron. Um, and we're going to do it with uh, common household, easily available tools and equipment. So, the first thing we need to do is to build a holder for our mold. And this is just made out of scrap pieces of plexiglass. There's a bottom square piece of plexiglass. And then there's another platform, a little piece of plexiglass in the middle that's smaller. And there's two walls put in here. There's an outer wall here and then a little inner wall here. And the inner wall is lower than the outer wall. This is only used to make this. This is made out of rubber. So once I have this, and then the, the reason for the, the usage for this will be clear as we go along, but uh, once I have this, I pour PDMS rubber, which is a two-part optically clear rubber, into this. And when it hardens, I end up with this. And I can peel this out, and this is actually what I want. Now, we didn't vacuum out the gas out of the PDMS when we poured this, um, so it's kind of white and bubbly, um, but it, it, it serves its purpose well. So we have a flat surface here with an indentation, and within that indentation is a ditch going around here. And you'll see, again, the reason for this will become clear. So we are going to use this to make a cast of our microfluidic device which is here. And what we want to do is place our microfluidic device feature side up here on this center platform. And we're going to keep our microscope slide over it just to, uh, to keep the dust off of it for the short time that we're going to be doing this. Um, we're going to be using a couple of pieces of equipment here. This is a scale that I got on eBay for about $10, um, and it actually will give you pretty good resolution down to the tens of grams. And then this is a digital timer that I got at Kmart or Walmart for, for uh, $10, and it just times. What we're going to be making our impression with is this two-part epoxy, Loctite brand epoxy, five-minute epoxy, that we got at uh, Lowe's uh, hardware store and uh, you mix equal parts A and B. And that's what we're going to be casting with. So I'm going to set this to zero. And then I'm going to mix up about maybe 20 to 25 grams, enough to fill our mold over here. So let's say if I do uh, 25 grams, I'm going to want about 12 and a half grams of each of the components. These bottles are getting down. So we want 12 and a half grams of each. And now we want about 13 grams. This, the, the mix is not su you know, super critical, but. Okay, I'm gonna set this for five minutes. And uh, I don't wanna run it down to the last seconds here. You can use a, an epoxy that is um, a little bit slower setting, give you more time if you want, but this has worked pretty good for us. Uh, I think a, like a 10 minute epoxy or an hour epoxy or whatever would work just fine, but it takes longer to cure. So I'm gonna mix this, what I'm mixing this with is a Dremel tool and a bent screw. And I'm just making sure I don't nick the sides of the cup. Uh, this introduces a lot of air but the process that we're going to be doing is vacuuming the air out, so we're not too concerned with that. We're going to place this into our homemade vacuum chamber. Uh, if you're interested in the details of this, you can see our other video on how to do a plasma uh, etcher, homemade plasma etcher, that we discussed the vacuum chamber in. So if you look down in this, you will see that the epoxy will start to foam and then it'll rise. And that's all the gas being taken out of the, uh, the epoxy. 
I can vary the amount of vacuum here because I don't want it to vacuum outside of the container that we put in there. Um, but it'll rise up and then eventually it'll fall. Got to keep an eye on the time. So far it's been a minute and 30 seconds, so we're doing, doing good on the time. And we don't have to be too concerned to get every last bubble out because we're going to vacuum this a second time after we pour it. So usually I let this go until we've uh, a total elapsed time of about two minutes. Okay, that's two minutes gone so far. And you can see when we introduce air back in, um, we get all that foaminess disappearing. Now we're going to cover our microfluidic device that we've placed feature side up. And we don't want to fill up this depression totally because we're going to vacuum it again. There's going to be some foaming involved and we don't want it to foam up over the sides of this container. So we, but the main thing is to make sure that your micro device is covered. And now what we're going to do is vacuum it a second time with the intention of just uh, removing any air that was trapped in the channels. We're done. Now we're not going to disturb that portion of it anymore. We're going to simply uh, add a little bit more to make this uh, fill it up to the top but we won't be adding any, uh, any epoxy to the area that's the interface between the microfluidic device and the epoxy. That's more than filled to the top. And we're gonna leave that for about 15 minutes until it gets uh, pretty hardened. And then we're gonna remove it. Okay, so uh, we've waited about 15 to 20 minutes. And as you can see, this is now hardened, and we're going to peel the mold back off of the epoxy. And what we have now, this is, this is reusable, and we have an epoxy mold and you'll notice that it has this ridge around it. So when we pour new uh, mother machines, it doesn't go everywhere. We can pour it just to, we can keep it in this wall. So here is our original mother machine. And what we need to do is just trace around the exterior of it. Make sure there's no uh, epoxy over the top. So this is your original mother machine, your mid original microfluidic device, and it's as good as new. And what we have in the center here is all the features that were channeled out in the PDMS device are now raised on this epoxy, and we can use this epoxy as a master. So we're going to show you some scanning electron uh, microscope images um, that will show you what's uh, left behind. I think you'll be amazed at the quality. This epoxy will pull uh, features, uh, I would say, in the range of 10 nanometers. Okay, so... Um, we have our mold that we're going to pour a PDMS device into now, and it has the features facing up. So we're going to use PDMS, which is an optically clear rubber. And it comes in a two-part mix, ten of these to one of these. Um, we'll turn on our scale, and we'll mix, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 grams of this. So we want about 1.3 grams of this, should bring us to about 14.5. There's 14.3, 14.4 is close enough. Okay, and we're gonna, this has to be thoroughly mixed. The nice thing about it is that there's no real time limit on it like there is on the epoxy. You have a lot of working time. 
So we're going to mix this pretty slow. We use the same tool. We just clean off the blade. Alright, so we're going to put it in our homemade chamber again. And again, as you turn it on, you're going to see the PDMS start to boil and then raise the air back. And now we're going to pour this onto our epoxy mold. Okay, so um, now we're going to vacuum it a second time. We'll place it in the chamber. Okay, that should be good enough. That's so, I'm now going to put this in an oven. I, I cook mine usually at about um, 150 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour, uh, but a lot of people do it um, overnight. But uh, we'll come back and check on it in about an hour. Okay, we've uh, cooked our PDMS for about an hour and then we let it cool down and we're ready to demold it now. So the first thing I want to do is trace around the outside. This is our wall here. I want to trace around inside that with an X-Acto knife. Oh. And on this side, we will have an exact duplicate of uh, the PDMS we started with. So now the only thing left to do is to, we can, you can see the edges here, we can just trim off the edges with an X-Acto knife and uh, we'll go ahead and punch this to add tubes and then uh, bond it to some glass and we'll be done. So we hope that helps and check out the rest of our videos on our site uh, and uh, thanks.